Right, okay, so a quick tutorial on uh, how to um, use the, how to do some basic fault reading with the uh, Diagbox interface. So I've currently got the Diagbox software started up. Um, I've already had the um, USB interface connected to the laptop one starting up, so it's important to have that on. A um, couple of things to note, just that you want to be on main power for the laptop, because if you're not, then uh, if the laptop loses power when you're communicating to an ECU, it could uh, corrupt your entire vehicle. And the um, yeah, the other thing to make sure is just that this laptop doesn't actually get connected to the Wi-Fi or internet in any way, because otherwise that will cause inactivation of the Diagbox software. Okay, so um, I'm into the basic menu. Uh, at this point, you can actually plug in your well. You can first of all go into the sub menu, and then at this point, you can plug in your OBD2 port into your vehicle. So um, just do that now. So that's in. And then you can also switch on the ignition. So uh, just doing that now. The ignition is on. You don't want to start the engine, but just on the ignition first position. And then we can select our vehicle model, which in this case is a Citroen C4. Obviously, just accept the uh, any pop-ups. Um, yep. Yeah, so then we choose the direct box software. That's the, uh, that's the one we want to use for this vehicle. Then you'll add this menu here. So once you're at this menu here, uh, this is kind of uh, what you're in, and you can start uh, doing stuff to your car. Um, the most important one to read faults and erase faults is to go into fault finding. And then once we go into fault finding, the system starts to do a complete check of, uh, of all the ECUs that are found on the vehicle. So that can take a while. But to just let that complete. And you can see we started scanning there, and uh, this will automatically show you defaults already as well. Okay, so now we have completed the test. Okay, so this is the fault menu then, um, and at this fault menu you can see exactly what's been scanned and what's going on. So this little icon on the left indicates that a fault has been found. And we can expand on those faults by just clicking on the little icons. So we can see we've got a uh, well, a lighting fault here, preheating relay circuit fault, and engine running fault as well. Um, so once you're at this menu, you've essentially completed a scan of your vehicle, and you can obviously scroll down to see whether there's anything else that's going on. You can scan now for all the ECUs. But uh, the best thing to do at this point is to make a print. Um, and uh, you can export this into a PDF form, um, and uh, that gives you a list of, uh, of all of the well, all of the faults that are going on with the vehicle. So I'd highly recommend doing that. So just print it, print it to PDF, and then save onto the desktop somewhere, um, and then that will you can have you've got that for future reference. Because these fault codes you can just type into Google and uh, see what's going on. The other thing you can do here is actually go to the fault journal. So if we uh, if we click on that icon here, well, we've got a communication fault. So we can just uh, try and reseat the uh, USB adapter. Okay, so here we have our fault history, and this is also a very useful um, log because it shows you um, what uh, problems have happened over the well, entire course of the vehicle's passed up to a certain point before it starts to roll over. You see we're reading 551 here and it's overwriting the oldest ones. Um, but yeah you can also export that so you can obviously navigate in, in that history if you want. But uh, the best thing to do here as well is just export that as a uh, as a print. So you can just print that again using this dialog option, print it to PDF, save it to the desktop and then you've got that future reference. So that's quite useful. Um, yeah because then you can just refer back to it. And you can obviously, um, yeah, you can get more detail from the fault by just pressing on the icon there. But let's go back. Okay, so here we are again back at the fault menu, at the fault report. So to actually clear a fault, or attempt to clear a fault, it's quite straightforward. We just go into one of these sub-menus, and then we select the fault, and then to go into the sub-menu. So click on the icon, or double-click on the entry, and just uh, accept that little... Uh, sub window and here we can see we've got a bunch of useful options um, 
So the thing to do here really is to go to repair if you want to clear faults. And then here we can do reading and clearing of faults. And then we can actually, on this menu here, we can then attempt to clear the fault by pressing on this icon. And then we always just have to accept the little pop-up window. Yeah, so now once that completes, that means it's attempted to clear the fault, but uh, it, it's tried to clear it and it's come straight back. So uh, so this fault cannot be resolved, it's just a simple clear. Okay, that's a, um, that's a simple tutorial, so thanks for that and uh, see you in the next one.